Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimena's Promo, and today we will be covering 10 navigation gestures you might not have known on your Samsung Galaxy device. Now, for the entirety of today's video, we are not using the navigation bar. For me personally, I feel that that is outdated. I am using gestures, and if you are somebody who still uses the navigation bar, I just highly suggest just to try it out for a day or two. You'll probably find that you get used to it, and it's much easier, faster, and more fluid. Now, to turn this on, just scroll down inside of those display settings settings, hit on navigation bar, and select swipe gestures. It'll take away your buttons on the bottom. It kind of opens up the screen just to view a little bit more. And then the two things I would suggest is to turn off the gesture hint, and then turn on, if you have it, switch apps when hint is hidden. Because we will be going over one of these really cool things here, which is where you can switch applications by swiping on the bottom. So now that you have done that, let's go over the first hidden feature or the first hidden navigation. And that is dealing with the one-handed mode. Now, when it comes down to the one-handed mode for the gestures, all you have to do is swipe down on the very bottom. And the best thing I can mention is where you see the top of all of these applications on the bottom, you basically swipe from it. So you can see that I can swipe it on the second, third, and fourth icon, but when it comes down to the first one, it actually pulls down the, no the notifications panel. If I swipe down on the camera, it also pulls down the notifications panel, and that's really just because it wants you to swipe in the middle of the screen. Now, if you go inside of my settings, my home screen grid, is five by six. So I have five icons on the bottom and I like this little screen grid because it shows more applications on the real estate. If you go down over here, you're just kind of wasting space with larger icons. And again, uh, it wants you to swipe down the, from the middle of the phone, which is gonna be the middle three applications. So anytime that you would want to go inside of one handed mode, you can switch it from left hand, right hand. You can also make the screen a little bit bigger if you want to. So if you're trying to use a full screen application, that's just kind of too far for your thumb. All you'd have to do is simply swipe down uh, on any of these little icons on the very bottom. Then it's going to pull up one handed mode. Now, just so you guys know, if you do swipe a little bit above it, it's just going to be their notifications panel. If you turn it on. Now, if you do not have your one handed mode turned turned on, just make sure you go inside of your settings. You're going to scroll down to where you see advanced features. And then inside of advanced features, you can see one handed mode and you just have to toggle it on. And because we're inside of gestures, it's going to be gestures right there. So again, swiping down from the middle. Now, the second hidden gesture is the one that we're talking about from before, which is where you're able to swipe on the bottom to go to your previous application. So you can see here, I'm swiping on the very, very bottom and it's pulling up the very next application that I was using. Now, as you first start off, you do have to swipe from the left to the right. So this will pull up your recent applications. Now you can also go back if you wanted to, as long as you started to open it up. Now, if you swipe from the right to the left, it's just going to switch your screen, your home screen to the very next home screen. So it will not work when you go from the right to the left, but if you go from left to the right, there is your recent applications. And it's actually that simple. And also what's cool is if you swipe over to bring over the next application, one of the things you can do is if you swipe over and then you lift up, it's going to pull up your recent applications. Now you can also get that done simply by swiping up and holding. So as we mentioned before, if you are brand new with swiping, if you swipe up once, it'll take you to the home screen. If you swipe up and hold, it's the recent apps. This next one will help out inside of your contact list. So if you go inside of your contacts, pretty much all you'd have to do is if you want to find somebody super quick, you can see all of those dots on the right hand side. These are letters. So all you'd have to do is press and hold. And as you swipe, you can actually go through your entire alphabetical list super quick. But if you don't want to swipe, as you can see, we are swiping up and down. You can simply just tap on any of these letters right here to bring up that, uh, that letter. But again, it is kind of hard to actually see all these letters. So so all you'd have to do is just swipe up and down to find that letter alphabetically. Then you're able to find the person and send them a text or call. The fourth gesture that we'll talk about is inside of the camera. And all you have to do is just simply swipe up or swipe down. And you can change if you're using the front facing or rear facing camera. So since we're inside of the camera, I'm going to throw in one additional. So this is the hidden gesture 4.5. Uh, and that is by moving your little shutter button. So all you'd have to do is maybe you're, you're holding the phone the way that you're holding onto it. It's very awkward. You can't really reach the middle of the phone. All you'd have to do is just swipe up 
on this little shutter button right there. You don't even have to do a long press and hold or anything like that. You literally just swipe up and then now you can move this anywhere you want to. And then that is your additional extra shutter button. Oh yeah, and if you guys are brands new here at the channel, Jimmy is promo. You appreciate these tips, tricks, tutorials, and the latest information on your Samsung Galaxy devices. Make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to so get notified for all future videos. Gesture number five is dealing with the recent applications. So what you usually do is when you're swiping through, you just kind of click on it, you open it up, uh, you use it, or maybe you want to get rid of the application. But if you want to open it up again, you just swipe down. So there is two gestures you can use with the recent application. The first one is swipe up to get rid of, swipe down to open it up. Gesture number six is going inside of your gallery. And if you watch one of your videos, so originally when you're playing with and watching some of the videos on your phone, it's actually not inside of the video player. Now, if you were to tap here, you can open in video player. If you actually don't have the video player, you're able to download it for free off of the Samsung Galaxy apps. But here is the full video player that was normally there from Samsung. But I feel like when you look at their gallery now and you watch videos, it's kind of a lighter version of a video. But what you can do here is you can swipe up on the right hand side to either change the volume. And then on the left hand side, you are able to change the brightness. And then if you were to swipe right or swipe left, you're able to change the direction of the video. So if you needed to fast forward, if you wanted to rewind, uh, again, volume up, volume down, brightness up, brightness down. So this was originally always within the Samsung video player for many, many years, for the last 10 years at least. Uh, but for some reason, when you watch regular videos inside of the regular gallery, it's one of these lighter versions here and you cannot do it. Uh, this basically swipe up takes you into the, the, the details of it. So there's really nothing that you can do with the left and the right. It just kind of switches. I kind of wish Samsung would automatically have the video player option here just because it gave you more options, even though it's just a little bit heavier of an application. Gesture number seven is dealing with your notifications panel. So as you noticed from before, when I was showing off with the whole one handed mode, if you swiped down on the ends or really swipe down anywhere, it doesn't even matter where you are. Now, if yours is turned off for some reason, I remember it used to be off by default, but now it's actually on by default. Really, all you'd have to do is head inside of your home screen, press and hold, hit on settings. Then as you scroll on down, you can see right here, swipe down for notifications panel. Now, if you have this one turned off, it's just gonna open up your application tray. And I feel like that's really not needed because if you swipe up, it gives you the application tray. Swiping down makes sense. It brings everything down, which is your notifications panel, the quick settings here, or the rest of your quick settings, your power mode, search, settings, things like that. Uh, so again, if you are not using this swipe for notifications panel, this is one thing you should definitely turn on. Gesture number eight is dealing with wallpaper. Now, just so you guys know, if you go inside of wallpapers and style, if you go to lock screen wallpapers, my lock screen is set up to dynamic lock screen and you can go through the settings. You can, you know, figure out your different categories. You can choose up to five different categories and these change and update every two weeks. So what happens is what with dynamic lock screen is every single time you go to the lock screen, it will show you a different image. Now, what's cool is if you have this one set up is you can swipe from the right hand side and it'll pull up and show you the rest of the images that are coming up next. Now, as you scroll through, you can actually hit on this little four icon. It will show you the different categories. If there's a different one you want to turn on or off and download. Also, what you can do is when you are going through these images, let's say that we go through and there's one that we find that we're not really too keen of. You can hit on those three dots and you can go to hide this image. So in this way, when you're going through your home screens, you know, in the future, those ones will not show up. Now, if you go through and you did hide any of these ones, you can go to show hidden images. And then now all three of them that I had hidden from before is now back. So all you'd have to do is just head right on back and you can make these things hidden one more time. So this way, as you go through, you know, this is your lock screen, you can go through and you get these ones hidden so you don't have to see them. Gesture number nine is a way that you're able to take a screenshot. And that is by swiping your hand across the screen. You can go from the left to the right or you can go from the right to the left. Now, if you do not have this one turned on, really all you have to do is scroll down. You want to find your advanced features. 
Then inside of advanced features, go to motions and gestures, and then here, just turn on palm swipe to capture. There's multiple ways of taking screenshots. You can do it with your palm. You can do it with the volume down and power. You can also do it from the Bixby voice. Uh, you can do it several other ways. Even if you have the S Pen, you have a couple other ways you can do it. One of the ways that I also like to do it is through uh, this rectangle option right here. And what it does is it's a way that I'm able to crop exactly what I want to take a picture of. And then this way I can send it off to somebody without it saving to my phone. So if there's something you know simple on your screen you wanted to share, do this option right here. Pick the area you want to take a picture of, and then once you have that done, you can hit on the share button. So this way, once it's shared, it is actually not cluttering the gallery. Now for the final and 10th gesture you can use, it's two fingers on the home screen. So everybody knows you can do the pinch to zoom. It opens up all of your home screens. You can actually turn off that screen on the very left that gives you Google Discover, Samsung free. You can head over, you can add in more uh, home screens. You can delete a home screen if you don't need it. Uh, so this right here was super simple. It's the pinch to zoom. The other thing you can do is from the very top, if you pull down slowly from the very top, it'll open up the entire uh, settings menu without you having to pull down twice. You can see here you'd have to pull it down twice pretty much anywhere that you are for that pull down or swipe down for navigate or notifications panel but two fingers from the very top very slow will do that and get it done and then the last thing is that you are able to pull down with two fingers and it's going to pull up kind of like a pinch to zoom again you can do it from swiping from the very top you can do it from swiping from i think from the right to the left so there's a couple ways to to do the pinch to zoom rather than doing this you can do this if it's a little bit more simple. Uh, but yeah, just a couple gestures from the home screen with two fingers. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you guys did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.